Buenos dias, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you actually did nail this one. That, that was, was really good. pretty good. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> Welcome to the Backmarkers F1 show. If you didn't, if you didn't know, this is the recap of the 2019 Mexican Grand Prix. Glad to have the whole gang along back uh, again, it, Tyler. Welcome yeah. back after yeah. a couple couple weeks off. I think it's nice uh, nice to be back and at home in this desk. So uh, <laughs> apologies for not being around. Life gets busy sometimes, yeah. but uh, I'm glad I'm back for what was a an okay race in Mexico. Yeah, yeah, and we're we're glad to have you back. And uh, my, the word for me to describe this race was anticlimactic. I was telling Tyler before you came, like I don't think this race actually happened. Like it was kind of a joke. Yeah. Like yeah. Like mostly because of the pit stuff. Yeah, the pit stuff, the uh, pit stops. Kind of, the crews, I don't know what they were doing over there in Mexico. But it was the stomach bug. Did you hear? Like I 150 around, yeah. crew members got, got some much? sort of stomach oh, bug. Oh, those. yeah. So Damn. Pierre Gasly had uh, quite the wet seat after his race on Sunday. Ew. Like, <laughs> I hope it was not who. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> he, well, he <laughs> definitely was. <laughs> Did you hear what Helmet Marco said? No. He's like, well, he better be ready for qualifying or else I'm putting a diaper on him. <laughs> well, it clearly lit a fire in his pants. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Because he did get a top 10 finish. That's true. He it's did. True. He That's actually right. did have a very good race. Yeah. Um, with the flu, which is impressive. Um, but yeah, the crews were like the thing that was off this this race. It was you know, very weird what was going on around pit lane. Um, but uh, as you mentioned, the race was definitely anticlimactic when it hit kind of that the halfway stage mm -hmm. um and as it was moving forward the first half of the race was actually really good um but yeah the last half was very anticlimactic kind of like how lewis's tires yeah. didn't hit the cliff and i mean and it fall. was interesting in terms of seeing some overtakes here and there and more mm. in like the midfield and the more of like the uh, the back markers area but yeah, like the front wasn't super interesting i found um it was more of a kind of a strategy call a strategy call game uh, in the front and top five, top six kind of area. Yeah, a wonderful strategy call too by Mercedes. Because yeah. we, even though we didn't think it would be, I don't know about you guys, but I thought once they made that decision, I was like, oh, well, be maybe Lewis will get, you know, he'll be well, lucky I to mean, get a podium. I think Lewis was doubting the strategy yeah. call as well. So once I heard Lewis complaining, I knew Mercedes was going to win the race. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. As long as Lewis complains, everything goes well. I just, I just kind of, yeah, it's like. You want to get on the radio and say, Lewis, we've won six constructors world titles. I think that we've got this yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> and like even um I know I wasn't here for it, um, but last week, um, when they did win the when Total's like, just to let you know, Lewis, we've won the drivers world championship for the sixth time in a row. And he's like, Good job. Good job, guys. <laughs> Good job. It's like <laughs> Good job, guys. Okay. It's like I can win one neck, you know, I can win six next week too. So, you know. Yeah, he's like, I don't care, guys. It's all about me, Lewis. I, I, he should have had faith, but I, I don't know. Like, I don't know how much of it is bluffing Ferrari because they've all got access to the radios. Right. But I don't know. I think that genuinely he was concerned. It. And it did look like at the time when he came in that it wasn't going to work. But then, like you said, to the end of the race, it was just you're waiting for his tires to hit the cliff, like well, Vettel and Ferrari said, but never did. Mercedes also said on their team right there, like everyone's doing a one stop. And then, like, immediately right after Ferrari and Red Bull both pitted for like mediums who are on the same tire, so yeah. committed to a two stop. So I was like, oh, you guys completely screwed this up. Like, right. no, it's well, not a one Vettel, stop. Vettel did go for a one stop, didn't he? Because he ended yeah, up going for his, going for a longer stint than but we were expecting. Leclerc went in Leclerc first, went and, in. like right after they said that, and then Max followed him or something. Yeah. One of the two. Well, uh, Albon triggered it right when he came yeah, in first, right. and then and then Leclerc had to respond. But it seemed like Vettel was in the prime position after he came in for the the hard title, hard title, hard tire after his long stint. It seemed like okay, he was in a good scenario. But I was so surprised that Vettel was on tires that were 15 laps younger than Hamilton's, and he just yeah. wasn't able to yeah. make that impact. No, the tire life was f remarkable from Lewis. Um, he did a great job managing those tires and yes, and massaging them. Well, the tires were also <laughs> kind of weird this weekend, too, right? Like, Alex Albon struggled with the medium tire kind of all weekend. Yeah. Where he was doing really well in the softs and the hards, where but he kind of struggled with the medium as he was going in the race. Yeah, I'm not sure if that has to do with, like, how Red Bull set, set up, up their tire, their, tire yeah. their car, and it wasn't great on mediums, which isn't good. He did two stints no, on those. True. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and his first his first medium set was only like five or six laps too, wasn't it? It was really short. Uh, I, thought. I thought it was a little longer 10, than that. I thought it was like laps. twelve somewhere. Okay, 
I, I don't know. I could be wrong. I don't know. I could be wrong too. I mean, I feel like I'm definitely wrong. But. <laughs> <laughs> Way to be confident. <laughs> well, do you have that clip uh, queued up, Tyler? What you yeah. were talking about about uh, Lewis massaging and yeah. According wow. to Vettel, you would be uh, all the ladies out there would be very lucky if uh, well, they got they a massage wasn't from quite uh, the victory. Lewis. Uh, where do you think the race kind of turned, and where do you think the kind of victory was lost? Well, I think Mercedes did well, so congrats to them. I think Lewis drove well and managed the tires well, so. So uh, I think uh, we really tried everything. We tried the two, the two and the, and the one stop, but uh, he got just massively lucky, you know, hitting the tires so early, not hitting a cliff. I mean, it's like a, if you're a woman on this planet and you have this guy, you know, giving you a massage, like when he's giving you a massage, like he's treating the tires, it's just pure magic. So <laughs> him that he made the tires last. He's got magic fingers. You, you heard it here first. You surprised at how well the tires last. Yeah, that was, so that was at the paddock post-race and they were, Lewis and Vettel were doing their interview by themselves and uh, clearly Vettel was still in a good mood. Yeah, and, it was uh, in a very good mood. Yeah, wanted yeah. a massage from Lewis. I think is what he was hinting at. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's he's got the magic touch, magic, magic hands. If he Lewis can make uh, a set of C twos last forty eight laps, then you could imagine what kind of massage. Guess he just give. don't think Vettel's kind of just letting Mercedes know he's free. You know, just a couple <laughs> for <years>. a massage. <laughs> no, <laughs> as a driver, see, you know, a couple of weeks ago, just checking out our the Mercedes. Damn, that looks pretty good. Now he's just massaging up Lewis so he can get into Mercedes. Just saying. That'd be for what, for 2021? <laughs> yeah. I'm just totally... Yeah, you're totally screwed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I well, but he, Vettel. yeah, Vettel is in a good mood. Maybe, I don't know, he kind of seemed like that's as much as Ferrari was going to get out of the one, two. And he started second, finished second. So it wasn't a horrible day for him. It wasn't yeah. as bad as Japan, let's say. Um, but it's weird. Like their, their bromance, if you want to call it, since Baku 2017 has been pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. When you think back to how heated it got after that race in, in Azerbaijan, and now they're buddy buddy. Yeah. I, I also like, I feel like Vettel has kind of reached the end of the year where he's like, you know what? I can't really do anything with the rest of this season. Yeah. I should look forward to next year. So that could be a, a huge part of him being in a good mood. Oh, lately. for sure. They're, yeah. they're definitely at the end of the year. Did you see him and Valtteri were having beers after the press conference? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Vettel ordered a beer on the podium. They couldn't drink it during the press conference. So he put it on the floor, like in the press conference room. So he had one for him and one for Valtteri. None for Lewis? Yeah, Lewis just doesn't get a beer. He gets a massage. It probably wasn't vegan, that's why. <laughs> it wasn't vegan. Yeah, was, oh. You know what? That's probably true. Like, <laughs> right? Like, in the beer. Like, probably very good point, I don't know. Yeah. Is beer vegan? No, it has, no. It has gluten in it. Can, is gluten not to do anything with veganism? No, it doesn't. I don't know. Because vegans still eat bread. I don't know. There's so many different things out there. I don't know what the difference is. Maybe it's a gluten-free thing. Maybe you're right. Maybe it's gluten-free, too. Maybe yeah. all he eats is salad. Yeah. Maybe, maybe he really likes salad. Yeah. Why, why live, then? I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> I just, yeah. I have no comment. I love food too much, so. <laughs> yes. But I don't know. That's an interesting... Well, because probably something to do with it, but maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe more... He's... Valtteri and, and Sebastian are just more of a... Yeah, maybe Lewis is a, just a, you know, a vodka water kind of guy, one of those guys at the bars. Yeah. I was maybe. vodka water. But anyways, you, you know that it's the end of the year when that starts happening. <laughs> yeah, no, 100%. Well, and, and Vettel was really upset with uh, with the trophy that he got, the Heineken trophy. Yeah, maybe what? he doesn't like Heineken. He does, just doesn't like the sponsor trophies. Called it shit. Well, it's not wrong. They are crap. Yeah, they were, didn't look good. Um, <laughs> and it's been like that for the last few weeks where they've been all sponsored trophies. And it's like, what is going yeah. on here? Yeah, I mean, he gave that stiff arm to the selfie guy yeah, on the podium. And then, <laughs> then he gets the shit trophy. So Yeah, I don't know. I, he must not be a fan of Heineken. Maybe he wanted a, a German beer instead. I think that he just likes those classic custom trophies that some races give out yeah. that are really nice and they've got some embroidery or some sort of design on it instead of just something that says Heineken on it. Yeah. Well, yeah, Mexico is such a big race for everyone too. You should expect for that race for them to have a real trophy. Or like a Mexican sponsor. beer. Yeah. Um, Corona? Corona's Mexican. Corona's right? the biggest yeah. one, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Why didn't they? Just, well, I guess right. Heineken's big, obviously it's, for Formula Heineken's One. Heineken's also sponsored. I think spon there's is Modelo. A sponsor. There's Modelo's also another. Oh, yeah, I think that's, that's right. American though. Modelo? Uh, it's a it's a Cerveza. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm basing this on. That's the brand, right? <laughs> I mean, so Cerveza is, made so in is Mexico. Estrella Galicia, but that's Spanish. It's a Spats from Barcelona. Well, you guys are wrong. And how's it definitely Bush. from Mexico City? Modelo is. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. Is that the weird one that has the commercials where it's like 
Brian Ortega used to grow up in the streets fighting for his life, but now he drinks Modelo. Oh, they also own Corona. So, so it's all one. It's yeah. all one. I but feel like that would have been a bigger sponsor. That for ruins them in a Mexico. lot of things. It would have been for sure. Anyways, Corona, Modelo and Pacifico. I don't. I want Pacifico. I want Pacifico. Yeah, I don't know that, but yeah. so if anyone can send us some Pacifico, that'd be great. <laughs> we digress. You're no way Pacifico. Far. If you want to sponsor us, <laughs> you learn something new every day. It's true. You do. Back um, to the race. Yes. Just quickly on the on the podium. How cool was that podium celebration? Very. Yeah. yeah I didn't realize uh, it was the first time that it was they ever did that with an F one car. And you know the whole the team is crapping themselves like don't drop it, yeah. don't drop it, <laughs> yeah. don't drop it. It's like, like I really hope the hydraulic system works yeah. on this. <laughs> yeah. Well, when Lewis came out of the platform, I was like, Oh, what is this? Yeah. I didn't expect him to be coming with the car onto the platform. I don't think it was planned. Maybe he just went along because he was like, that, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> it didn't really seem like it was planned, though. You know what I mean? It was because I think the original plan was just for the car, but maybe he's just he's like, like Can no, I get on. I'm standing here, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, but that was cool. Uh, the the great Mexico crowd, the energy mm. in that stadium section is very unique. Um, yeah. So they, they do that, right? They well, make it where you want to go to that race as a fan. Yeah. Like, it just looks so much fun. Well, that and, you know, as soon as the race ended, all you could hear in the crowd was Checo, like for a solid five minutes. That was minutes. cool. Yeah, that, that is really awesome for the, you know, entire country to get behind a driver like that. I know we've seen it with, obviously, you know, every home country you kind of go to, but I've never seen them so loud and vivid. So just Oh, nice don't say it to the Dutch fans. I, I, we haven't seen a Dutch race yet. I can't be on that true, yet. Yeah. yeah, I think that might be another level. But yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, like I said, next year might be a little bit different. But yeah, so yeah, it was great. Definitely something uh, a race I want to go to for sure uh, in the future. But we'll get to uh, Sergio a little bit later on. Um, we kind of got off a little bit on a tangent here, but bringing it back into the race and, and the race weekend as well, because the drama really actually happened on the Saturday yeah. when Max Verstappen. It seemed like he had his second career pole position. And what was kind of a bit of an unexpected pole position for Red Bull? I mean, we know their car is good on this track, and they got pole last year, but it seemed like the Ferrari power on the straights was really going to prove to be a pole position for them and a race win. Um, I heard some things that Ferrari put a little bit more downforce on the car, whereas Red Bull took a little bit out, so they were quicker on the straights, so they kind of made up that gap. But then the whole Valtteri Bottas crash happened, Max Verstappen didn't lift, and then a couple hours later, we find he gets a three-place grid penalty, starts the race from fourth. By the way, kudos to the Mercedes group for getting that car back together. Yeah, that was that was and very crazy. impressive. And they put a good pieces. car together. Yeah, too. They, yeah, not like it. You know, they had a DNF or anything, or the car wasn't performing. Like that car performed all yeah. race. So, and for Valtteri to bounce back quickly, yeah. I mean, I'm sure you guys heard on the team radio he was out of breath and he took a big hit. So for him to kind of be able to get back in less than 24 hours later and. Yeah. It was really racy. Yeah, well, I mean yeah. that that crash could have been worse than what well, could have been much worse if you know he crashed five feet ahead instead of where he was. For so sure, yeah. would have still slid a little bit further. Um, it, the reason I bring up the the Verstappen uh, penalty was just because they the stewards kind of gave an explanation as to why he got the penalty because there was confusion, right? Initially, afterward, we thought, okay, they might take a look at this because he didn't lift. We knew that Vettel lifted because we saw the onboard. And then Max made his comments in the press conference, basically admitted to the fact that he didn't lift and was pretty arrogant about it, right? I mean, he he even said, he's like, well, it didn't look like I, I lifted, did I? So basically, the, the stewards and the FIA kind of gave out some reasons as to why it, it took so long afterwards and why he was given the penalty. So number one being that his crash severed the marshalling system. So it's right where he crashed was where the marshals control the yellow flag system that goes on the driver's dashboard and that t- creates all the telemetry. So that's one thing that he didn't get. Um, we did see the marshal with the traditional flag came yeah. out. You finish with chips. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next reason why the delay took so long, it was I think three or four hours after the race, was Michael Massey, who is basically the the head of the FIA in terms of the the race, obviously took over for Charlie Whiting at the beginning of the season. He had to improve and repair the barrier for the poor barrier for the poor Super Cup race that was coming after. So that's why it took so long to kind of get this decision through was because he was trying to he was too busy focusing on the fact that they had to replace the barrier for the race that was coming right after qualifying. The third reason being that the stewards are busy with another matter, which was Dano Kvyat who, if you remember, was reported for an unsafe release with that sort of incident with Daniel Ricciardo. So they were also investigating that. 
And that is why Max eventually was uh, penalized. And the reason why Hamilton wasn't penalized, because Max also said that he thought that Lewis should have gotten penalized as well, was, let me just find where it looks. So he says, once I did that and I took a look at all the video evidence, had a look at the data, Lewis's one was quite easy. There was no yellow flag. So Max was the last car that came mm -hmm. through. Lewis, I believe, was the third last, Vettel being the second last. And at that time, there was no yellow flag. Seb saw the yellow flag, lifted. Max did see the crash because he admitted it and just decided not to lift. So essentially, that is why he got the penalty. The three-place grid penalty, it's the regulation when you don't uh, lift on the yellow flag. So that is why he got penalized. The FIA says it wasn't because of his press conference comments admitting it, but I think that had something to do with it. Maybe a bit, but yeah. I think still, like when you look at the video, clearly, because um, the F1 did release a video on their... Um, from Max's point of YouTube, view, right? Yes, yeah. from Max's point of view, and you can hear the engine sounds, and yeah, he doesn't lift at all, which, I mean, he got a lift at that point. I know he wants to have a good lap, but I think it was it's a penalty deserved for Max and kind of one of those brain fart moments where you want to go for it, but you know you can't go for it. Yeah. He and still did. And the bad luck continued for him going into the race as well. Yeah, that's true. With, with Valtteri. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Funny enough. And Lewis Hamilton as well, right? Or was it Valtteri? Yep, yeah. Hamilton as well. It's it's difficult, right? Because Max is still maturing. He's not 100% there. And we kind of seen it this weekend a little bit. Um, First time in a while, though. Yeah. First time true. since probably well, for sure. Brazil last year. Yeah, and, and listen, like it's part of what makes him great. The yeah. the confidence, the stubbornness as well. I think every champion has to have that. But it also can backfire on you sometimes. And, and we saw it in this race, right? He had that banker lap in. He would have had pole position regardless of that lap, most likely. Although Vettel was on a flying lap, I think he was improving, but I don't think it would have been enough. So, you know, that's where you kind of got to be a little bit more sensible for your drivers as well, right? For safety, Valtteri was in a vulnerable position. The marshals were as well. So I think Verstappen will learn from that situation. Yeah. But mm -hmm. like Shaker, like you said, it just carried on into the race, the frustration, the aggressiveness. And again, the things that make him great was sort of the downfall for him in Mexico and eventually just spiraled out of control to where at the point it looked like they were going to win the race and they finished sixth. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Which, you know, Rebel didn't want going into this race. They definitely felt like they could come out with a race win and ends up being disappointment pretty much all around except for Alex Albon who had a fantastic race. Really good race for him, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was a bright spot there for for Red Bull. Was in a podium position at one point as well. Yeah, I was hoping it was ur yeah, urging him on to get that yeah, podium. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. Uh, but uh, unfortunate that he didn't. But it will come. I think it will come this year. Alex Albon get a podium. Yeah, I think, I think he's going to get said one. That, right earlier yeah. uh, this year that he would get a podium. Yeah. Yeah. Well, only a couple more to go, so we'll see if he does it. But um, and and then lap one when he came together, Max Verstappen did with Lewis Hamilton. Right. My opinion on that is definitely just racing incident. Yeah, I think 100%. that both are equally to blame. Uh, I think that Verstappen was ahead heading into turn one, and he had the line into the corner. Lewis squeezed him just a little bit, and they had a bit of an oversteer moment, did Lewis. And then Verstappen also had that oversteer moment, which is when he collided into Lewis Hamilton. Then he had to go across the grass, and then he almost hit Vettel as well. So uh, And Perez. That was uh, after the Valtteri puncture, I believe. Though. Right, right, right. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, sorry. I'm getting the two mixed up. Right. So this was still still lap yeah. one um, when he had to skate across the grass for, for turn two and three. So I think it was just a racing incident. I think just two drivers going for position. Interesting, Lewis said in the post-race press conference that anytime he's coming up against Max, he's leaving him plenty of room. <laughs> <laughs> He said that last year. Yeah, he said it last year. And, and I think, uh, what was it? He was doing an interview last year, too. And he said, "What you and Max go into the, into the turn one, what do you do? He goes, stay away, I think is what he said. Or something. He's yeah. like, if Max is on your right side, where are oh, you yeah. on, on the, the complete left. opposite left. side? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's tight, right? The turn two, three combination, there's not a lot of room. We saw in 2017, uh, Hamilton and, and Vettel coming together as well. So... Yeah, I just saw that as a racing incident, but the one you're talking about right, with yep. Valtteri, it seemed like he pulled off a, a spectacular overtaking move in, in turn 13 in the stadium section. Yeah, in the, on the hairpin, which you don't usually see. Mm -hmm. you don't know, think I've ever seen it. Honestly. Yeah, a, a pass there, but he was ballsy enough to do it, and he got it done, but um, kind of didn't it didn't work out in his favor. It just wasn't just enough room, and Valtteri ended up puncturing his uh, right rear, I believe it was. Yep. 
and uh, you could tell him going all the way down the street. He's lucky he didn't go on the straight because that could have been a massive accident, him going that fast. Yeah, and again, it's what I, what I said before. His aggressiveness and the pure racer in him was his downfall this weekend too because he probably could have waited until he got him on the DRS straight and he yeah. would have overtaken him. But again, that's not Verstappen's character. He sees a gap, he goes for it. Yeah. And that's why we love watching him. So yeah, exactly. I, I just think it was unfortunate. It's a tight corner so they had a little bit of a contact and it's weird how these things work we saw Vettel bump into Leclerc on lap one nothing not yeah exactly yeah. nothing happened right so it's it's just a case of a little contact here a little couple of inches here and there and maybe it would have been different for Max if he had not had that puncture Red Bull still believes that he could have won the race so that it just after that just spiraled out of control had an incident with Magnuson as well he went off track to pass Magnuson of course Magnuson doesn't give any room either so it was he did give him the spot back, though, right? Or was Magnuson that let him, kind of just let him go ahead? Okay. Um, I think Magnuson let him go. I not. I don't remember I don't if remember. Magnuson was a back marker at the time, but I don't think so. I believe it was for position. Yeah, yeah it was for remember. position, but that's what I mean when he went off track. Magnus, Magnuson let him go ahead and take which, the position, right? Yeah. Which is interesting because yeah. he Verstappen overtook him outside of track limits. Yeah, that's but what I mean. No, which should have been the yeah, other way around. Right. Verstappen should have been the one giving this uh, position back. Yeah, so that was... Because um, who was it? Ricardo gave the position back against uh, Sergio Perez when he locked yeah. up, yeah, and he let him come back onto the track. So I, maybe the stewards just missed that one with yeah, a couple could've. of the incidents going on. Um, no, I, it, when I mean when Max made that pass, um, but and like sorry, when I guess when I saw the puncture, I immediately thought, oh, like Max maybe you know could have waited for the DRS straight. But then I thought to myself again, I was like, no, like that's what we love at him, Max, is that he doesn't wait for no, the he, easy overtake. Like he sees a gap, as you mentioned, and shoots for it, which and I feel like he would have him. had a little bit more difficulty in that yeah. straight as well. That would probably would have been the best opportunity to take, overtake him and then try to get a little bit more speed on the straight. And yeah, had him in the next corner. But um, he recovered well, and lucky for him that the tire came off when it did because it didn't give him any floor damage. Yeah. yeah, it's actually better the fact that it delaminated completely to the rim and did a good job getting it back on three wheels. Yeah, Not yeah. often you see that, but um, yeah. some, some good off-roading skills from, from I Verstappen. I want to say Max has probably had the most exciting drive this race in terms of to watch. Um, yeah, I would say so. You're right. Because against Carlos Sainz, some great defending from Carlos Sainz as well and some good overtakes over there. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was like three or four laps in a row. They were just going, uh, three or four turns in a row. Sorry, they were just going at it. Um, yeah, no. Yeah, it's always great to see him. As much as we like seeing him at the front, it's also great seeing him out of position, seeing him cut through. If only Mexico allowed for more overtaking, it'd be a yeah. little bit more exciting. But as we saw, it was difficult to follow, difficult to get close with overheating issues as well. So, but I think that sixth place was probably the best that they could do yeah. after. Well, I mean, he pretty much went from 20th to sixth place, yeah. right? So, yeah. yeah, for sure. It's just disappointing, right? It yeah. looks so good for them on Saturday at least Saturday right after qualifying, and then they get the bad news. It actually probably was maybe even better for them starting fourth because you get that slipstream. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, Ferrari handled it fairly well. They didn't, Vettel didn't get by Leclerc there. So, I mean, who knows, right? It, it could have happened either way, but yeah. I think Max's best part of his weekend actually came off the track. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we were watching this before we got yeah. on. Yeah, this was uh, it was during Sky Sports, I believe, was interviewing Max, and uh, an old friend of Max Verstappen decided to interview him. I'm so glad they're still friends. By the way, there's no, there's no like yeah, that's true. There's no hate relationship there. Talk about Daniel Ricciardo. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, not so not so lovely. How's it going, Daniel? Why would you have a puncture? Uh, I touched with Valtteri in the hairpin. Yeah, I went on the inside. Your fault. I don't know yet. I, I went on the inside and suddenly I felt a touch. So okay. we'll do you want to do the interview? Sorry, sir. Yeah, go on. How was your race, Daniel? <laughs> um, my weekend is better because I still hold the lap record. So <laughs> it's <laughs> actually that no, it was it was harsh. It's kind of but a when, shot when at Max. Yes, oh, yeah, that's last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When I saw it yesterday, I was already angry after my qualifying, and I saw one thousand faster. Did you smash the door? I was close. So how was your race today? How did it work out for you, lap one and stuff? Uh, I started on a hard. It was actually probably the best start I've had. <laughs> so, oh, really? Good. And then uh, I went like maybe 120 laps on the hard tire. First <laughs> and then uh, I caught Perez at the end, but uh, Renault I didn't special. to pass him. So I yeah, kept the quick on the happy. straight, huh? Aye, aye, aye. Yeah. Very quick. Yeah. Max, what are you doing on Thursday in Austin? Can you do some driver interviews for me? Thursday. You I'm busy? Very busy on Thursday, yeah. <laughs> Not available. Great job. on Thursday. Is it? Yeah. 
Yeah, I've got my broomstick out. So. Should we send it? <laughs> Why not? All right. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. <laughs> so, <laughs> t- two things to take out of that wonderful uh, transaction between those two drivers. Uh, as you mentioned, that they're both friends. And uh, that, you know, they can still joke around and, and kind of do their thing. And um, that and that Max is a great interviewer. <laughs> yeah. He's pretty good. He did, actually he did pretty a good very good job yeah. there. Um, and two, what Halloween costumes Daniel Ricardo and Max Verstappen are going to show up in on Thursday? Because think, they said they're going to send it. So. I think Max Verstappen should go as Daniel Ricardo, And then Daniel <laughs> goes as Max Verstappen. <laughs> and then they trade cars and then they race like that. Well, I don't know. Ooh, that'd be <laughs> fun. That would be fun. Sure, Daniel would like that. Yeah, yeah Daniel would love that. It's true. Um, that's ah, you gotta love that. It's, it's the post race stuff was better than the race. Yeah, it was. Know. There was a lot of really good gems I from just, the post race. I just yeah. want to comment on him being in a tree. You know why he's good? It's because he held his hand out rather than using his other hand for the microphone. That's true. Oh, <laughs> or actually pointed the microphone <laughs> yeah. to the yeah. person he's interviewing. <laughs> Not just hold it right in the middle. Yeah, right in the middle, yeah. <laughs> so many people do that. Frustrating. Oh, just some notes for you guys who want to who want to break into the the TV industry. Basically, what Max <laughs> proved is that if you're thinking that anybody can do an on air job, yeah, you can. Yeah, so it's much. that easy. Yeah. <laughs> it's you just got to know how to talk. That's, That's pretty it. much it. Everything comes out. You really got to bullshit. Yeah, yeah. I think Max is pretty good at that, isn't he? Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I think that I, I really miss their their driver pairing, and I, I can't remember who it was. It might have been Paul DeResta who was talking about this on one of the Sky Sports segments, that Max Verstappen, his camp, so his manager and his dad, they would actually prefer Daniel Ricciardo to stay. They want that experienced driver next yeah. to Max, somebody that can win races right. and, and push Max along as well. So they kind of don't like this whole unstable situation with the the rookie drivers coming through, like Alex Albon right now and Pierre Gasly before. So it was interesting to listen to that and, and to know that Verstappen's camp would actually prefer to have somebody like Ricciardo who can, you know, on most weekends, match Verstappen's pace. It's true. It would be uh, would be nice to see them back together. They were a good combo, but they were like a... It was a little toxic, too, though, at points, right? In that Red Bull sure. garage. I mean, you have to think of that point, too. Like, you're glad they're still friends. They can joke about it now, but there is a point to in that in that relationship where you're like, these guys are going to kill each other. Well, it's kind of like the Charlotte Leclerc and Vettel relationship from this year. I don't right? think so. Not at I, all, I don't think. I think behind the scenes, I think it's a... a you it's think? A, I think it's a toxic relationship. Hmm, Interesting. In I don't think it is. My personal opinion. Interesting. They they seem respectful, but definitely they're not close. I think there's a big age gap too. Yeah. That's a problem. Yeah. And we know Vettel to be an old school type of guy. So Kimi Raikkonen is like his perfect teammate, right? Yeah. Yeah. They can go drinking together after. And yeah. Fine. Exactly. So but Charles can't drink. We yet. definitely <laughs> will not be seeing Charles Leclerc coming on stage drunk off his ass. No, which isn't fun. <laughs> he was though at his birthday party. Was oh, it? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Good good man, Charles. <laughs> he, he was. I guess he hit what twenty one, twenty two. So yeah, I think 21 yeah. maybe, but I don't think it's as toxic yet. I think it's pretty tense though. The, ever since Italy, I think it got a little bit more tense, but right. it still seems fairly friendly. Now next year, if they're battling for the championship 1v1, yeah. then it can get a little bit we dicey. You have a Nico Lewis situation, for which sure. isn't good for Ferrari because they just need to have a good team to get try to get a driver or a constructor's championship. That's all they need. Speaking of, is he actually coming back? Nico? Rosberg? Yeah. So no, he's know. too busy making YouTube yeah, videos. Yeah, okay. I mean, he did make a YouTube about him coming back, but he did on April Fool's. And yeah, I know. I, okay. He's also like one of the biggest clickbaiters now on YouTube. He is. Uh, he is. Which, I mean, good for him because I, I fall for it every time. But And because it's Nico Rosberg, I still follow it. fall for it. But um, yeah, I know he's busy with his, with his YouTube and his Sky Sports stuff. I don't think he comes back. Do you? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't think he does. No, I don't think he, he, does. he he's done. He's doesn't seem like the type of guy that will do a comeback. No, plus unless he runs out of money. No, I which think, I don't think he will. No. Well, I mean, if you're if you're clicking on this videos, yeah. then he's he got won't. YouTube money now. Yeah. yeah, he's got. Yeah, it's true. That's why he's doing those thumbnails and the titles all the time. But uh, yeah, I think getting uh, back on the Ferrari thing, it showed in this race, right, with the strategy call. Once again, I was just telling you guys this before. Like once I saw Ferrari was promoted to one two, I'm like, that's it. That they're not going to win this race. Yeah, I they know. they find a way every single race to to bottle a one two, with the exception of Singapore. But I don't get it, man. I mean, yeah, on on the surface of it, what could a Ferrari have done differently? I mean, maybe they could have came in at the same time Mercedes or stayed out longer. I mean, I don't know. I'm not a strategist, and it's difficult to kind of figure out what the right strategy was. But it just always seems like Mercedes when they get a one two, they convert it, and it seems pretty straightforward. But Ferrari just, they're, they're unable to do it. And they yeah. just find a way to trip over themselves race after race. And 
It's the seventh race now, or sixth race, that they've uh, got pole position. Well, it seems like Ferrari doesn't really have a strategy going into a race. Like, especially well, with this one. Well, where they, they don't have one. They have eight of them. Yeah. Okay, plan C now. Plan, plan C. C. Plan C. <laughs> My favorite, which race is it when they're like, okay, plan F, plan yeah. F. It's like, it, uh, was, it was uh, last race. I think it was Japan, was it wasn't race? it? Or was it uh, Russia? I don't know, but they do have like, it's like 18,000 plans. Like, what are well, you doing? Well, it was just, you know, the situation where they were asking Vettel to come in. It's like, you know, pit, and we're going to come into the pit. And he's like, are you sure? I think I can keep going. We're thinking about it. Okay, actually, yeah, he yeah. called his own strategy. Yeah, yeah. he's like, um, we're thinking about it. He's like that, and it wasn't even like, let me think about it. Oh, and then it's comment. It was right away he responded, "Yeah, we're thinking about it." It's like, man, you should like be making those decisions before you make that call to Vettel. Well, maybe that has something to do with Vettel being like, "Are you sure?" Like he doesn't have the full trust in his strategist. But yeah, I kind of. But then if you looked at amazing graphic again, I'm going to comment on it. The tire de- degradation graphic mm-hmm. that they've had for the last two races, fantastic. Under a lot of criticism, though. Why? From Pirelli, because they say it's not accurate at all. I don't think it's accurate at all either. Yeah. No? Okay. I don't know how they're getting the data. I mean, I like it. We talked about this last week. Supposedly, they're getting it straight from the same data that uh, uh, all the, the teams, teams are get? getting. Yeah. Right. That's where they're getting their data from. I, yeah, I don't know if it's coming through the heat sensors or whatever, but Pirelli was saying that it's misleading, as we saw with Hamilton, right? His rear Pirelli tires were at like 30%. also said their hard tires could only do 48, and Daniel Ricciardo went to about 53 laps. Yeah, I yeah. know. It's <laughs> it's weird. I just I wish they wouldn't put any of that data out and just whatever. You know you what know, I mean? Medium, it's, medium tires are supposed to last about 20 to 24, lasted about 10 to 15 in this race. Well, <laughs> and, and that's why we were expecting <laughs> Lewis's tires to fall off the cliff, yeah. because we're like, yeah. they can only do 50 laps. It's about 48. Yeah. And it, n- nothing happened, so it, it wasn't accurate. And it, again, this is all part of the whole 2021 change of what needs to be fixed. I think this race was perfect to summarize that. But So I think what we've learned is we can't trust Pirelli. Maybe. <laughs> it, it's definitely not a foolproof system. I just I was reading that, that the, the graphic wasn't well, 100% accurate, according I'm, to them. <coughs> Excuse me. I mean, there's also um, a lot of other circumstances when it comes to tire degradation, you know, temperature, and especially with who they were commenting a lot throttle about. Throttle input. like Yeah. And the fact that there's a lot of the drivers are, if they're directly behind a driver the entire race and they're overheating or, you know, they're right. a little bit more far back. So I, there, there's a lot of variables to it. So I can, yeah. It's a great point, though, because Lewis was out in front and he had yep. no turbulent air on this yep. tire. Yeah. So maybe his tires at 30% deg is a lot better to drive on than Vettel's who's at 50% but is following in yeah. hot air so yeah. that's a great point that you yeah. bring up it's it's a great graphic for us if it's 100% accurate but it's not like oh Hamilton's tires are at 30% like he's done yeah. well they didn't use it very much this race compared to Japan I think I only saw it once or twice where in Japan yeah. they, they used it every few laps or so for sure yeah and, and Hamilton as well right we have to give the driver credit being able yeah, to manage the sure. tires and maybe for him it's a lot easier to drive on worn tires than it is for some of the others but as I said in the beginning, it was surprising to me that Vettel was not making any impact where it seemed like Bottas was chasing him pretty well. But being on 15, 16 laps fresher tires, you would think that Vettel would be able to cut that gap and he just wasn't able to do it. Yeah. Yeah. We were in for a grandstand finish, it seemed like, with the last uh, five yeah. laps. I thought it was going to be four guys going at it. Yeah, yeah. me but, too. Uh, it never seems to turn out that way, which no. is unfortunate because I would love to see a four-way battle for the lead with like five laps to go and just all of them sending into the corners and ah. Yeah, remember uh, Silverstone last year? That's yeah. what happened, yeah, right? Yeah, and it was exactly. a great finish. So, yeah, it's unfortunate. But at least if you're, you know, a strategic fan of, of that side of the sport, this is probably the best race for you. Yeah, it's yeah. true. Um, one of the last couple things uh, I want to talk about was Sergio Perez, mm, the yes. hometown boy. Like you said, hit Shaker probably had all of Mexico behind him on Sat on Sunday. For sure. Um, he had a great drive in P7, and, and his best finish, I believe, at his home race in Mexico, best yeah. of the rest. Yeah, and all six cars finished in top. Well, the top six cars. So yeah, best of the rest. Yeah, I was just really impressed by by his race, and he's one of the masters of managing tires. But Racing Point just got the strategy call right. He had some good overtakes, some good battles as well. So Perez, man, he's been on fire the last five races. He's been really good. I still say he's will get at least one podium this season. Oh, I think so. Three races think? to go. Three races to go. Yes, and I think it's going to be in the very last race at Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Wait, you think uh, it's gonna be it. a massive crash and just yeah, so here comes. that's exactly what I think. <laughs> <laughs> here comes Sergio. Will that be the race that Albon gets his two then? He's gonna get the win then, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um no, I agree. He's been fantastic as of late and I don't know, he always is good. Like he's a great driver and um 
just maybe not the racing point car that they would want this year. Uh, it's still a good car, but it's not it's not there. It's not like we had last few years where I they're think, they're for sure the number four car. Well, I think their car kind of has gotten better and better throughout this year. Like there was the beginning of the year was kind of rough, and I think since Canada, they've kind of just been improving a little bit here and there, yeah, whatever yeah. they can. So. Yeah, they've made some good steps forward and still a developing team, yeah. right? This whole takeover. They're technically, from, you know, into their first, first year. year yeah. Yeah. Correct. So still a positive from They're not that far off from Renault. And that nope. was huge for Perez to be able to hold off Daniel Ricciardo and Nico Hulkenberg yeah. in the end to yeah. finish ahead of Renault. Um, you know, there are a couple of points within reach for that fifth spot, which is horrible news for Renault, but great news for Racing Point. Um, so if they can snag that fifth place at the end of the season, which it's right there. Um, yeah, really. You know, Lance Stroll was knocking on the door as well of a, of a points finish. Uh, unfortunately, wasn't able to get it, but um, they're they're almost there. I think. I think that next year can be a, a really solid year for them. Now yeah. that they've had this year with Lawrence Stroll and, and his team coming in, so I'm looking forward to to Racing Point in this next chapter for them. I'm well, looking yeah, forward for to sure. when we get to the point where like five teams are winning a race a year. Like no. I know I know it's really ambitious and probably won't happen. Yeah, but like, please, like, I don't know. I just, I really want these mid tier teams to get a win at some point. Renault and Racing Point, and get McLaren back in there. Like, ah, there's just Absolutely. so much. Like, there's so much potential. Only other team not to get a podium finish since last year, uh, rather than the top three, is Racing is uh, Racing Point. Yeah, which they Perez. got a podium last yeah, year. There's nobody else. I don't think. Yeah, we had Kvyat who got the podium. Yeah, for Toro. Yeah, sorry, so, forgot but that's about it, Kvyat. right? Yeah, we had one. Um, which is just disappointing. And one of the things that I, uh, I talked with Chris Medlin about, um, if you guys haven't seen that interview with uh, Chris Medlin, uh, he's an F1 journalist. He was in the Drive to Survive series as well. Uh, I recommend you watch it because it's it's really informative. Chris yeah. is excellent. Great job with that. Interview, yeah, that was a really yeah. good Well done. It had nothing to do with me. It was all it was all Chris. <laughs> and, and I got I know some people. Uh, we had one comment that was complaining about the audio. Yes, the audio is not. Our quality like yeah, it is here we can't control external yeah. factors guys but like, i was very appreciative <laughs> for chris because he was in new york took yeah. a busy He's time a busy out of his man, schedule yeah. talked with me for for an hour uh, in a coffee shop so um give it a listen and, and it's really good and one of my takeaways was that he said that 2021 is not necessarily going to be the revolution that we expected but it's kind of going to be the first step into what we hope is going to be like what we're talking about yeah uh, a competitive F1 and we talked a little bit about that too right where I brought up a team like Williams who all this money that they're spending flying to 21 races a year and you're finishing 19th and 20th that's a problem right Daniel yeah. Ricardo talent being wasted away at Renault to finish 8th at most weekends right yeah yeah so this is where we want the sport to move to where five teams are going for a win six maybe again I don't know why they just don't cut and cut and paste IndyCar they don't want to do it, right? I know they Standardization, don't. they're very against it, but I, I see the argument. It just makes great racing, doesn't it? I think when you, you watch an IndyCar race, you're entertained for the whole race. It's true. They just need cars to be less reliable. Make faults in your cars and everyone will be fine. Just have a... <laughs> a, a <laughs> just a kill switch. Yeah. Ah, it's, 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 a, it's a spin of the wheel like who we're going to kill. Yeah, like, no, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Well, Chris actually talked about that because when I asked him if they were going to bump up the engines for the 22 race schedule to, to four, but he said, you know what, keeping it at three is not a bad idea because you might have that reliability where yeah. you take grid penalties, for example, and Max has to come back from 20th on the grid to... So that was an interesting perspective yeah. I hadn't thought about because it does shake things up a little bit. Um, but yeah, they're very against standardization and they don't want it to turn into IndyCar. Yeah, exactly. Which I understand they want to keep the identity, but I think we need to remove the teams from the negotiating aspect of it because yeah. they're the ones that are trying to get their hands in everything and they're changing this and so many things that we heard about like we talked about in the interview standardized gearboxes they scrapped it standardized brakes they scrapped it so many things that was brought up and, and that they just scrapped so one of the things that they did agree to is bigger side pods so they can advertise more well, everything's about money. So we more, all know money, that. Yeah. more money. More <laughs> money. <laughs> yeah, I would love to have more money as a as translation. A my, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but anyways, because the deadline is coming up this Thursday, actually on Halloween. Mm -hmm. So yeah. check that interview out and you'll be able to kind of uh, educate yourself on what is going on in the whole process. Very yeah. interesting stuff. We'll make sure we have uh, all the news when we hear it first and 
hopefully get it out to you guys pretty quick and that way you and guys then, are just as informed as everyone else and then everything will change after that one <laughs> yes. And, yes well it happened i was so <laughs> excited because we i talked i asked him about the reno racing point protest broke it down beautifully gave you some inside information that you wouldn't have known elsewise i'm like this is going to be great going to release this as a clip everybody's going to know what's happening on as i'm editing it the next day breaking news reno has been disqualified from Japanese Grand Prix results. I'm like, son of a bitch. I know. Again? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It just beats us all the time. But... Every single week. It's something. What can he do? Um, we just get the, the wrong side of the stick. Yeah, that's all right. Um, shall we move on to, uh, since we're talking about Red Bull, uh, not Red Bull, Renault, uh, Daniel Ricardo, who had a very good race, I thought, um, and a pretty good stint as well on his, yeah. on his tires. And he did 120 laps. <laughs> 100, <laughs> yes, 120 laps, Tim. <laughs> so good for Daniel. Um, no, but uh, fantastic drive by him. Uh, finished eighth, I believe. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah, I, think I believe you are correct. I think it's. Oops. I think he finished eighth. Um, but uh, good for him to to come have a good race in uh, in Mexico. Uh, and I always like seeing Daniel Ricardo do well. And happy Daniel Ricardo is a Daniel Ricardo everyone wants. He was very frustrated after Saturday qualifying in P thirteen and voiced his frustration afterwards. You know, screaming into his helmet. Uh, like he did last year. I can't remember what race it was at, but it, it sucks, man, because the talent is there. He deserves to be in a top team of the car. Like I said before, I don't know why he went to Renault, what his real decision was. Cha-ching! Money. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess, but he has said that he wants to fight for world championships. And I mean, there's rumors that Renault's assessing their future in the sport. That's it's not necessarily the team you want to be at right now. If you wanted to be winning, then why the hell did he leave Red Bull? Right. Well, maybe this the project that Renault put in front of him was money too too much to resist. Well, it, <laughs> you would think they would have a plan though, like, where money. they want to go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, seriously, hundred dollar bills. That no, was. The I'm, just, I'm just kidding around. Like, I love Daniel Ricciardo. He's yeah, a great sorry. racer, but I agree. We it would be nice to see him at a seat where he's winning races and not, like you said, fighting for eighth and yeah. ninth place. You know. And if he did go for money, I mean, I don't blame him. I don't blame him either. Make your money. He runs the world, man. Yeah. He sets his family up and himself up for the future. And again, he's still driving in Formula One. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? We could be wrong. Maybe Renault comes out with a Mercedes style car in 2021 and he'll be a world champion. (sighs) Yeah. You never know. Never know. But it doesn't seem like he. Renault's situation is a little bit rocky. And especially if they don't finish in fifth, at least in the Constructors' Championship, somebody's getting fired. Oh, for sure. So. We'll see how that develops. But um, what else? Any, anything else in the race? Um, I just want to quickly mention um, Daniel Kvyat's punt <laughs> of Nico Hulkenberg. Um, did you guys think that should have been a penalty? or Torpedo's back! Oh, dude, he ran him out of road. <laughs> I don't think so. I thought that was all Kvyat. Oh, it was. I was okay. just kidding. I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> okay. I uh, was just making sure we're clear there. But um, Three races did in a row, I want to say. Yeah, I think it's... Because I don't think he got a penalty for that, did he? He did. He did? Yeah. Okay, yeah. sorry. I must have missed that. Yeah, because Hulkenberg eventually did finish in 10th. Okay, my apologies. Then, okay, well, good. Justice well served. <laughs> um, but yeah, I felt bad for Nico because it was just... I don't know. He just got punted in the corner. Like, What's going on here? That's like the best way to define like a racing term of being punted out of a race yeah, is that. that one right there <laughs> like that's perfect it was just I, good for nico to get the car rolling again and so he could finish 10th like as in after the penalty yeah um so i they must have gave him a penalty that was like just enough for nico to finish 10th i think they gave him a 10 second penalty oh so, yeah it must have been yeah, 10 second time penalty after yeah. hitting the rear of hulkenberg and then what was the difference of time from um kvyat to stroll doesn't say. It doesn't say, but uh, it was more than ten seconds. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so yeah, they must have just done that, so it fits. So yeah, it fits perfectly in. So Hulkenberg gets it, which is the right call. I think so too. I mean, when you look at the onboard and when you look at the corner, I mean, I wasn't even close. I was like, "What's no. he doing there?" <laughs> the nature of that corner again, you have to take into consideration. Yeah. It's not a ninety degree corner, right? So Hulkenberg had committed to it. He that was his corner to take, and Kvyat just got his nose in there. So yeah. Yeah, the, unfortunately, the torpedo has made its return it has, in 2019. Yeah. <laughs> but here. it doesn't help out his chances of a Red Bull seat, I don't think. No, he hasn't hit so. battle yet. So <laughs> <laughs> he hit me in reach. the rear and <laughs> turn two, and then <laughs> fuck <laughs> sakes, honestly, <laughs> racing or ping pong. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Danny Kavia, what are we gonna do? But uh, I think that does it for the Mexican. I think so. Grand Prix, yeah, folks. it's all the talking points. Yeah, it's a weird race. Back-to-back week, 
or race weekends, uh, the U.S. Grand Prix coming up. Yep. Next um, year, or sorry, next show, we're going to open up by singing America the Beautiful. Yes. Try to refuse. God bless America. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or what, what was the one that you were singing? Uh, God bless America. God bless America, that one. Um, but uh, Lewis Hamilton can clinch the driver's title if he outscores Valtteri by four points, I believe. The yeah, four? it's yeah. very He's likely. It was a 74 points difference, so yeah. Yeah, so four points. So that's all he needs um, to clinch. So. Just bomb it. Just come in like... 10th place. <laughs> Give other people a chance. Give other ones, yeah. Give Valtteri, imagine Valtteri, somehow Lewis gets knocked out of all these races, Valtteri wins every race. That'd be so sudden, funny. Wins the title, that'd be awesome. It wouldn't happen because I think James would have a say in that. James, uh, Valtteri, it's James. Uh, James, you're going to have to crash. Valtteri, get out of your car and give it to Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> Stop the car. Stop, Stop, Stop the car. <laughs> Why? Stop the car, please. <laughs> I will tell you after you stop. Yeah. yeah. Now after reverse. The... Oh, you're disqualified. That's too bad. <laughs> yeah, that's that's actually funny. Sure. I I didn't know that was the regulation. If you yes, I did know reverse. That. Uh, yeah, no. I think it was mentioned last year at some point in Norris. Okay. Because yeah. they mentioned it with Norris, obviously, when he yeah. didn't have a wheel. Which yeah. th- that was funny. Like they should put that laugh track. Of, you know that music when they run uh, like a blooper. Reel? Yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> that was so. I, my favorite one was the Alfa Romeo one though, where he just he just dropped it on the on the rim. Yeah, and the tire comes off. It's like, uh, guys. So <laughs> like, guys, uh, I don't think my rim my tire was on. Well, obviously not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know that uh, Twitter account fake Ted Kravitz? Yes, that that, good one. one of his tweets was like. Instant analysis. You need all four tires to race. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. And hopefully everyone has all four tires in uh, in Texas next yes. week. Yes. Well, hopefully all the all the grid uh, and engineers will feel a lot better. Yes. Uh, in Texas. Heading into yeah. US, back so. to back as with the flu. That's tough. Yeah. And I'm really excited to see Nyao guy. Who? Who? Nyao. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> that was last year. This That's race. That's right. right. Oh, I love that guy. I wonder if he'll be back. I really hope he makes an appearance. Me too. <laughs> Me too. Um, yeah, I guess we'll see you next in USA. That's right. That's later this week. We'll be uh, bringing you the preview for that race. And, and also our power rankings following the Mexican Grand Prix will be out in a couple of days' time. If you're still in need for some more content, like we mentioned, check out our interview mm-hmm. with Chris Medlin. That's in the description of this video and also uh, on our homepage of our channel. So you can check it out there. And I think that's about it for us. Um, I had... Oh, the other last thing that I wanted to mention. I did not know that Tiesto was 50 years old. Oh, yeah, man. He's, he's old. ancient. He apparently. looks he, good. He, he, he looks like 30 years old. Yeah, Plastic surgery. Mid-90s is one of his so when, one of his first songs or something came out. Really? I want to say mid-90s. Who was he partying with? What, whose garage was he in? To... Probably Max's because he's Dutch. Yeah, he's Dutch. Oh, yeah, By the way, are all Max. like electronic DJs Dutch? Uh, yes, most of them, correct. Yes, yes of them. they are. Except for um, the ones that are not. <laughs> <laughs> Instant <It's> analysis. <laughs> so, so Holland is known for what? Bicycles, kickboxing, and DJs. DJs. Really tall soccer players. Yes, true. that's true as well. Yeah, yeah. Re- really tall soccer players. Really imagine good your soccer dad players. Show- <laughs> imagine your dad showing up to a rave and being the DJ. That's Tiesto. Yeah, that, yeah, that's so true. That's Tiesto. Because when Ted was down there dancing, he was like 50 years old, and I was like, Ted, like, what are you talking about? He's not 50. Yeah, he's 50. That's crazy. Ted was partying with him as a kid. <laughs> Ted tried to look cool, but yeah, it yeah. didn't really work out. Oh, I love Ted. Yeah, he's great. I like that. I wish he was at all the races. I but was totally right. It was the mid-90s when Tiesto started putting up. Look music. at that. Wow. <laughs> it's not my era, that's for sure. I was born the year he put up music. <laughs> They didn't even have any of that stuff invented when he was born. Yeah, yeah. He he was actually a major cause for a big like he started a lot of the dance music movement. Oh. Yeah. Good well, for you, Holland. You guys got a lot of good exports uh, yeah. going, but uh, including Heineken. In- <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Don't roast me again for that. <laughs> yeah, but f- not a fan if you're Sebastian Vettel either. No, so that's true. Yeah, we learned we learned something this year. Maybe we'll drink some Heinekens at the end of the year. Maybe sponsor us, uh, Heineken. One of our Hello. shows. But uh, is that it? From, That's it. Uh, That's from you all guys? I've got. Yeah. Enough. Enough of the ranting and raving from That's us. That's all I've got this yeah. time. Well, it, it was a good one. That's a fun one. It wasn't. Uh, you just broke your chair here as well. <laughs> it's time to go. This is a wild episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting late, folks. Anyways, thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you for the U.S. Grand Prix. Thanks. <laughs>